Hi, I'm Dr. Laura Brown, and today I'd like to share with you the approach or the methodology that I used in a recent study where we were looking to make projections of extreme weather due to climate change for specific municipalities within Ontario. The approach that I'm going to share with you was designed specifically to be transferable so that other communities could potentially generate their own future climate projections and make relative decisions on climate adaptation and mitigation strategies uh, based on what could be expected for their particular communities. So in order to share this with you, I have broken it down into four different videos. This one um, is the introduction, uh, introduction, sorry, but it's also uh, going to go on and talk a little bit about climate modeling. And so give you uh, a little bit of background about climate models, what they were developed for to begin with, uh, how they work, and, um, and how you work with the output from these climate models, as well as what goes into these and drives these models. If you're already familiar with those kinds of things, you might wanna to jump to the second one. And in this second one, it's gonna be a demonstration of downloading the data sets that we used in this model. And they are downscaled data sets that are freely available for all of Canada. And so we'll talk a little bit about downscaling, which is taking the, um, climate change model data, which is at a coarse resolution and uh, bringing it down to a more local level so that you can make local level predictions or uh, sorry, projections. Uh, the next video is going to talk about the format that these climate data sets come in, and that is this net CDF format. It is a machine language format and you need specific software to be able to work with those data. So we'll talk just a little bit about that. And then I'm going to give a demonstration using this uh, project or this uh, product, which is the climate data operator software. And this is a command line um, software driven by command lines. We're going to give a demonstration of those command lines and look at some of the output uh, that you get from uh, this particular software package. So what we'll do is we'll start with um, what GCMs are. So we're gonna type in GCM, which is the acronym for Global Circulation Models and IPCC. So uh, Global Circulation Models are numeric models that use um, mathematical equations and algorithms to represent the physical process, processes and the interactions between the atmosphere, the ocean, the cryosphere, and the land surface. So this is, oh, I'm just gonna use my little tool here. Sorry about that. And here we go. So this is a diagram of that climate system. And so you've got the atmosphere, you've got the oceans, You've got the land surface, uh, it doesn't have cryosphere in there, but it's really looking at the feedback and the interactions uh, between all of these components of the climate system. And, uh, and then the output that you get from these models is really temperature change, temperatures and precipitation. Oops, no, uh, precipitation. So, these models were designed specifically to look at the response of this climate system to increasing greenhouse gas con concentrations in the atmosphere. And um, to that end, the data that goes into them represents the change that we expect to see in the future of the concentration of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere. We'll talk about that a little bit more in a minute. The way that these models work is they divide the globe into thousands of three-dimensional grid cells. And so what does that look like? That's really what this diagram down here is showing. And so here we have a grid cell. It's got a very coarse resolution. And so you're looking at a resolution of about 250 to 600 kilometers. 
Um, here you can see it's, it's shown in degrees here. So they're quite coarse resolution because it's covering the whole globe. You really can't get them much finer than that. Um, the other thing is that it is three dimensional. And so depending on the model you're using, you're going to get um, at 20, 10 to 20 layers of atmosphere and up to 30 layers going down into the ocean. And so all of this column is being modeled for each cell here. So they're quite complex models. The thing about these models is that there isn't just one that's a perfect model. We don't have a perfect understanding of all of the feedback loops and the interactions in the, this climate um, system. And so each model, which has been developed independently, uh, looks at feedbacks differently and models them differently. And so even though you're gonna have the same forcing or input, simply because the models handle that data differently, you're gonna have different outputs. And so really what you need is not to use just one GCM, but you need to use a suite of them um, and then take the average of the output of that suite to get a better idea of what the future temperature and precipitation patterns will be. There we go. So that's really about climate models. And if you want to know anything more about climate models, um, you should really look further at this site and you can read more or get other um, uh, references so that you can follow up on that. When you're looking at uh, putting data into these models, what drives them? Um, and and uh, yeah, really what's the input? So right now we have IP uh, representative concentration pathway scenarios. So what are these? These are uh, the inputs uh, based on social and economic um, ideas of what the future will look like. And uh, what it is, is it talks about the um, amount of greenhouse gases that will be in the environment for these different years. Ooh, geez, let me just uh, get back to my, where I can write on this, uh, for these different years. So, uh, concentrations change. So we start here at 2000, where they're all about the same. And then you can see that they start to branch off. The lowest one, which is this one, um, really assumes that uh, the globe gets together and cuts down on the greenhouse gas emissions. We move rapidly away from using fossil fuels and, uh, and we work together so that we have less uh, methane emissions, less aerosols in the air, and really um, by the end of the century um, have moved very little from the 2000 level. I didn't use this one because we've already moved past this level um, in our atmosphere right now. And uh, I don't see us on this trajectory or changing our ways anytime soon enough to actually attain this by the end of the century. That's the lowest one. The next one is RCP 4.5. And this representative concentration pathway is more of a mid-level. And so we're talking about this one here. And so as you can see, we start the concentration of greenhouse gases builds up, builds up in the air. And then by about mid-century, it starts to level off and it doesn't really build up much anymore. This one really counts on that we start putting into place um, things that will reduce our carbon footprint globally, that uh, we move to different technologies, and that certainly by the mid-century, we have really cut down on our greenhouse house gas emissions, and, uh, and we're just really kind of leveling off and, and not increasing them at all anymore. This pathway is possible, but we really have to get moving on it as a global society. Um, and, and 
we're not really there yet. We're more at this one. I'm just going to skip six because I have not seen six used really anywhere. And as you can see, it's also a mid-level um, um, concentration pathway. It peaks later and it continues to rise a little bit differently, but really um, I don't see that used. So, so we're not going to talk much more about that one. We're going to focus on this uh, RCP uh, 8.5. And this is really the worst case scenario, and it's really the pathway that we're on right now. And so this one, you can see, we just continue to pump greenhouse gases into the atmosphere. We don't really change our ways. We don't work together as a global society. Um, and that in the end, we end up just uh, with a much higher concentration by the end of the century. And we'll see uh, how that affects the um, temperature and climate in the future. As I said, this is the one that we're on right now. It's called business as usual. And uh, if we don't change the ways, this is really the one that we'll be on. So the last thing that I wanna talk about is that when you are doing climate models, um, that you want to, um, look at how to compare or see what the change is. And so in able to see what the change is, you have to have a baseline that you're comparing your projections in the future to, to see whether it's gonna get hotter, cooler, drier, wetter, those kinds of things. And so in order to get a baseline, you wanna take a 30 year period. And again, I'm gonna switch out of this onto here. You're gonna take a 30 year period and um, you're going to take the average of uh, the temperatures, the precipitation patterns, uh, dry periods, wet periods, things like that over this 30 year period. The reason that you use 30 year periods is that you have hot years, cold years, wet years, dry years, um, and so if you just look at one particular year, it's not really going to be representative to what you can expect on average for that area, which is really what climate is. It's the average that you can expect. So you want to look at 30 years um, data and the average over that time, and it will balance out those extremes. Later on, or in your modeling or forecasting, you compare other 30 year blocks to your baseline. So the common blocks are 2011 to 2040, 2041 to 2070, 2071 to 2100. And often these are referred to at the mid year of this 30 year period. And so you may have seen this in the literature before and 2080s. So that's the way that you look at your output, the way the data that goes into these models and um, the output and what it looks like. It's at that coarse resolution. Um, and uh, we're going to look next at the downloading of the data sets that we've used in this study. Thank you very much. If you want any more information about um, the representative pathways, about the history of climate models, about what's upcoming in the future from uh, the um, uh, Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. Read the fifth assessment of reports for yourself and see what they uh, project. Um, go to this site here and you'll be able to get all that information. Okay, thanks very much. We'll see you in video two.